Hey, what's going on guys? It's Andy the Mad Tata and welcome back for July 2019 Sales Roundup Part 2. Um, I realised a moment ago, after I said at the end of the last video, I'll see you shortly, YouTube videos kind of don't work like that. I'm not literally going to be speaking to you moments after this because there's going to be some time between uploading and stuff. But anyway, yeah, uh, we're back for Part 2 of July 2019 Sales Roundup, so we'll get straight into it because I did enough waffle in the last one. He says we'll get straight into it. Come on, technology. There we go. 16th of July, 2019. Into the Wild DVD and CD soundtrack bundle. Uh, this came in a big bundle of DVDs, CDs, etc. that I bought and essentially ended up having no cost price against it because there were that many items that I paid that little for that I couldn't apportion a cost to every single thing. Um, the DVD, interestingly, on this one was worth buttons, really. It was about £2.99. Um, but the soundtrack... Uh, actually had a reasonable amount of value for it, even as a used uh, used CD. It was in great condition, there was no scratches on it, the the, um, the the case and everything was in good condition too, and the inlay was all there. Um, so the CD was worth reasonable money, um, so I just bundled it with the DVD because I thought I probably wouldn't sell the DVD on its own necessarily. So I just kind of threw them both together, and what do you know, they sold relatively quickly. Um, sold for 1994 with zero cost price and made 14.63 after shipping and fees on those. 16th of July, still Ladies Roxy 46 Spectacle Frames. Um, glasses frames were something that I thought I'd give a little go. I remember seeing a video year or so ago easily i think it might have been a resale rabbit video possibly could have been somebody else but I, it was likely to be one of john's videos over at resale rabbit if you haven't checked out his channel and subscribed please go and do so he's amazing um yeah he was saying about buying glasses frames designer frames and things like that because people will go and get their own lenses put in them obviously um and as long as they're in good condition designer brands popular trends decent names things like that um, they they can do okay, so I thought okay, I'll give I'll give some a try. Uh, and I've sold a lot of Roxy clothing and Quicksilver clothing, so I'm sort of familiar with them as a brand. Know that they're quite popular. Um, and these glasses were that kind of geek chic sort of preppy style to them as well, which is quite in and popular. Um, so it was a hipstery kind of look. So it was well worth well worth a go uh, with them. And they did sell quite quickly. I think these were probably listed for around about two to three weeks, which is reasonable. You know, I, I would I would say for something a little bit obscure like a pair of glasses. Sorry, just not the camera. I would say something obscure like a pair of glasses that sort of two to three weeks is quite a quick sort of period of time to sell them in uh so it cost three pounds sold for 18.94 made 905 after shipping and fees and received positive feedback from the buyer on those uh they were a plastic frame so all i needed to do was just a little bit of gentle pressure and it just popped the lenses straight out i sold them without the lenses in but there's no reason why you can't just leave the lenses in and tell people you know you're only selling the frames but they might have lenses in them i would i would probably remove them to be fair if you can um, it just looks a little bit more professional. 17th of July, uh, Hasbro Travel Yahtzee 2004 edition. Very surprised by this. Um, it had a much higher price on it than I would have ever expected. Um, I actually saw this in a charity shop, in a big charity shop out of town. And um, it's a, a bit more like one of the kind of American thrift stores, to be honest with you. It's, it's a nice sized charity shop and you can do quite well with uh, certain items from there because they get a lot of stuff from the retail park that they're on. So they've got a lot of other outlets on there that uh, when they've got stock that they haven't sold or that hasn't gone on, that hasn't even sold after clearance or anything like that, they'll put it into the charity shop and it's just brand new items uh, that are all still factory sealed, factory t um, tagged and everything. So uh, you, you can do quite well in that particular charity shop sometimes. Um, I think another item that I picked up from there that I did very well on was the Polar Cadence sensor, uh, which was a uh, cycling attachment for a like a fitness tracker. Uh, I think I paid about two to three pounds for that. They definitely didn't pay more than a fiver for it and sold it for about 50 quid within a day of listing. It. So uh, I've done quite well from certain stuff from this chat shop. This was actually one of the second-hand items that were in there. Uh, this was a donated item, um, but I still looked it up because I kind of like traditionally typed games. So you've seen um, I've sold a few chess sets in the past and I've picked a few chess sets up. I like chess sets. I like um, solitaire games where, with the, the marbles. Um, I like Yahtzee. I like dice games. I like backgammon. Um, I don't I, I I don't really play any of these games with any degree of proficiency, but they are just kind of the things that I like having around and selling. Um they're just just that kind of 
there's some there's something really appealing about a game that's been around for years and years and years and hasn't really changed and is just very simple but quite addictive and everybody enjoys it. So um, yeah, Yahtzee definitely falls into that category. So I saw this in the charity shop and I I, I, I thought mm, three quid. Let's 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 look it up at that price because I thought that was a little bit more than I wanted to pay. And sure enough, they were selling for sort of between sixteen and twenty pounds from memory used, um, and. Even more than that, new. I think they were selling for around about forty quid or something for for a couple of new ones. It was a two thousand and four edition, so it's an older game. You know, you'd be lucky if you do pick up a, a new one, a new and sealed one anywhere now. Um, but certainly, um, second hand ones are out there, and if you're paying, you know, a couple of quid for it or something like that, it's not actually too bad because they they do good money and it sold quickly as well. So it sold for twenty two ninety four with a three pound cost and made twelve twenty five after shipping and fees on that one. Uh, 17th of July again, uh, Lady Super Dry Japan Frilly Fronted Shirt. Super Dry Japan are the English company that have their clothing made mostly in India. Go figure. Um, but a very popular brand, um, certainly with their coats and, and, and their accessories, bags, things like that. They do, you know, they, they sell very well. Um, they're massively popular. You, you can make quite reasonable money on some of their stuff. It tends to be one of those things where you don't make as much money on the sales, but you sell more volume so it kind of levels out that way rather than having something like say uh i don't know like um i've got a tommy hill figure dress on there for instance at the moment and that's that's going to be about 115 quid now it's going to sit there for a while at that price but it will sell so it's going to be a much higher profit item so it's that kind of long that long pound over the the quick penny kind of thing that I've talked about before as well. So this was a lady sort of frilly fronted short sleeve shirt in, in sort of a denim blue type finish. Really nicely finished, really nicely made, nicely detailed as well. Uh, as a lot of super dry stuff is, to be fair, it's not my personal cup of tea. I wouldn't wear it necessarily, but people do and I can see why. Um, cost £4, this one sold for £25.94 and made fifteen twenty three after shipping and fees. So that's reasonable profit really on that. Uh, 18th of July, you've definitely seen this in a haul video I talked about it because I was amazed about things like the fact that it had a septic tank and stuff like that in a kid's toy caravan and I'm still amazed by it now that is the, the level of detail and, and sort of attention to the, all these little th things that are probably unnecessary really speaking in a kid's toy you know, kids don't need to necessarily know about septic tanks in caravan toilets they don't necessarily need you know, it had a sink in the kitchen of in the kitchenette of the caravan, which had one of those um, like a shower head type tap that you pull out on a on a thing, and it didn't need that level of detail. It's a kids' toy caravan, but yeah, Playmobil's amazing uh, stuff. I I didn't grow up with Playmobil. I was like a Lego kid, really, more than anything, um, which is strange given how much I detest reselling Lego. Um, but yeah, the the Playmobil stuff is is astonishing to me. I love it. Um, so this was one that I picked up for two quid from a local charity shop, sold for sixteen ninety four and made eight seventeen uh, after shipping and fees. Had positive feedback from the buyer as well on that one. As you probably you might remember actually if you've seen in the uh, the haul video that I picked this up in, um, it had a load of stickers stuck all over it and they'd made a right th they they'd made such a mess of it they. Like the, the actual original Playmobil stickers that are supposed to be on it were stuck on there, but they were stuck in all the wrong places. Um, there, there were other stickers stuck on there that I don't think ever came with the item originally. Um, so I tidied that up as best as I could. I actually managed to sort of lift a couple of the stickers and stick them down nicely in the right places on there as well. Um, so that kind of tidied it up a little bit. And then I just had to kind of sacrifice a few of the stickers that were on there just for the, for the greater good of making this look saleable and making it, you know, look desirable um so yeah a couple of, a little bit of work on that and well i say a little bit of work it, it wasn't hard work by any stretch of the imagination but it did take a little bit of time just to prep that one uh, more so than your standard toys where it's just a case of check it works give it a clean and then you're good to go um this sort of took a little bit of extra prep in that sense so yeah did okay on that one in the end uh 18th of july fiorelli orange leather folio slash tablet case fiorelli um popular brand in bags shoes uh all your sort of leather wear but do be careful um because a lot of their bags actually aren't leather um they, they will always state in them what they are so always check the labels with fiorelli stuff uh because even some of their their 
fake leather stuff looks really, really convincing. Um, so always check the labels. This was definitely a leather tablet case, though, because uh, it was labelled as such inside. So this cost £2, sold for £20.94, and made 11 52 after shipping and fees on that one. I, I think that actually sold on an offer that we sent out. So that was one of the sent offer items again. Uh, as I say, try to move a bit of stock on this month because it was a little bit slower. Uh, certainly not in terms of volume. Volume's been okay, but profits haven't been as high. So um, I was trying to move a few more items on. Uh, Disney Store, 19th of July. Disney Store, definition of Tinkerbell mug. This was kind of, as as I've sort of called it in the title, uh, it said Tinkerbell's name on there, and then it had like a dictionary definition underneath. And yeah, I can't... Yeah, I can't read it off the, off the size of that picture, to be honest with you. But it had, like, the dictionary definition of, you know, powered by fairy dust and all of this business. Um, cost one ninety nine, about average for a Disney mug, to be fair. I'll pay I'll pay anything up to, sort of, £2.53 for a Disney mug if it's a particularly nice one, 3D one. But Disney mugs do okay, um, by and large, anyway. Uh, this was sold again on a cent offer. Uh, so it cost one ninety nine, sold for twelve ninety four, made four eighty two after shipping and fees. Uh, but it got it out the door. 19th of July again. Oh no, that in the other video, that wasn't the last pen refills. This is the last pen refills. Uh, retail arbitrage item, bought a load of them, uh, 50p a unit. Uh, they've sold consistently every month that I've had them. Uh, they've been in every one of my sales roundup videos. I'm just repeating the same stuff that I've said about 20 minutes ago for recording the other video, which is why I'm saying it so quickly. Uh, yeah, sold for uh, total 5.94, made £2.30 after shipping and fees on those, which is weird because I only made 2.25 on the others. I don't know why that is, but anyway. Yeah, they've been doing well. Uh, 20th of July, Glucomen LX Plus Blood Glucose Monitor. Uh, this sold, was cancelled, and then sold again within about 20 hours. So, um, one I, I picked this up at a, a car boot. It was brand new, unused, all of the accessories and everything inside, and all of the little, um, what do they call them? I think they call them lancets, maybe, uh, that you use for actually taking the blood. For, for actually sort of like, like the things for pricking your finger uh, before you test it. I am diabetic, but I'm not diabetic enough to need to d test my blood all the time. Um, so I don't know what all the, the terminology is around that sort of thing. But yeah, essentially, um, it's a blood glucose monitor and a, a beta ketone monitor as well. So it is quite a good thing for diabetics uh, when they're at the sort of higher, the more serious end of the spectrum than I am. Um, so yeah, this sold one day um, and then... About 20 minutes after the sale came through, the guy messaged and said, oh, um, I've, I've bought the wrong thing, I do apologise, can we cancel? So cancelled at the buyer's request, um, and that didn't go against me on eBay or anything like that, because it was buyer's request, not a problem. Um, Relisted the item, and then it sold again within about a couple of hours of, of this whole sort of start, this whole sale and cancellation. So, yeah, basically I sold this twice within the space of a day, but only shipped it once. And never got the money for the first one. Um, yeah. So I sold it once. What am I talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah, 20th of July. Yeah, sold that. £3 cost. Um, 26 94 shipping. Uh, <laughs> words. £3 cost. 26 94 sold for. And made 15 63 after shipping and fees. Also got positive feedback from the buyer on that one. Uh, the, the eventual buyer, should I say. 21st of July. Kolchak the Night Stalker DVD box set. I had never heard of this in my life. But it's a 1974 US drama series. Uh, which is about... I think the guy is a news reporter. Who kind of goes looking at the paranormal and stuff like that. I, I only know this from reading the spiel on the back of the box. So I might have it wrong um he might have been a detective that investigates the paranormal um but i'm pretty sure he was a reporter from what i remember but anywho um cult tv series apparently i'd, I'd never heard of it as i say and I'm, i've kind of got my finger in the old world a little bit that sounds wrong um but i i kind of like the the sort of older tv shows and stuff like that as a rule but like i say never heard of this one um so it came from uh the 65 pound bundle of just random stuff so 85p cost on this one sold for 14.94 uh, which was a sent out offer and made 7.94 after shipping and fees also had positive feedback from the buyer there on the 21st of july this is a vintage grundig steneret uh steno cassette recorder uh, you've probably seen on some of my other videos before, uh, the Olympus Pearl Corders and things like that. I sell a lot of dictaphones and general sort of handheld tape recording stuff. Um, it still sells pretty 
quite well, I think mainly down, down to the fact that it's simple. Uh, it doesn't require any special sort of batteries, chargers or anything like that. You just stick AA batteries in it and a tape that you can use over and over and over and over again. Uh, but also it can't be hacked or anything like that. So if you know it's kind of confidential notes and stuff, doctor's notes, it's probably more um, convenient for them to use something like that just because of the, the, the sort of confidentiality aspect as well, I guess. I might be stretching a little bit for that one. Um, this one was this one um, is specifically a stenography uh, cassette recorder. So um, things like uh, your court reporters and stuff like that. Uh, this is much more their kind of bag. Uh, but also, I guess news reporters to a certain extent would probably use steno cassettes as well. The cool thing about this steno cassette. Um, it's its own format. So you, you, normally, with your dictaphones and your, your sort of pocket tape recorders, they have they use the micro cassettes, which literally looks like a, a a normal audio cassette shrunk down. These use the steno cassette. The steno cassette's a bit bigger. It's probably about the size of a small matchbox uh, in terms of sort of um, di dimensions that way and that way. Uh, but it's obviously a lot thinner. Uh, what I really, what I never knew about these, and what I found out with this one, and I thought it was really cool. They have a, a little sliding counter. That's what this is here, just above my finger. They have a little sliding counter actually built into the tape, which tells you how far along you are on the tape, so how many minutes you are into the tape. And I thought that was kind of a cool thing, rather than having the counter on the actual uh, unit of the tape recorder itself, it's, it's got it on the tape. So if you take the tape out, you still know exactly where you were up to at that point. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing. This was a vintage one. It's a 70s model. Um, and there were a couple of others for these for sale. Uh, but it turns out that this one, which was in like the, the sort of bare brushed aluminium finish, is a bit more of a, a slightly rarer colour. Color. Um, they did a painted, sort of a powder coated black one as well. Uh, and there were a few of those on eBay. Uh, but there weren't, at the time, any working silver ones. There were a couple of uh, ones that were up there for spares. But this one fully worked. Uh, and I tested the life out of it as I do with everything. Um, tested that it recorded, tested that it played back. Full, you know, rewound the tape completely one way, wound it completely the other way just to make sure that there was no issue with the tape that was included in it. Um, made sure that there was no issue with the playback and the recording facility facilities on it so uh give it a good clean and everything inside and out as well and uh i actually if you've seen um the video where if you if you watch car boot chris's videos and you seen the one the, the, there was one where they were selling at chelford car boot and they mentioned that, that they met me there and they did hi guys um and this was one of the pickups that I actually showed Chris uh, that I'd picked up that day. So I'd not had this a huge amount of time. It did sell quite quickly. Um, cost £3, sold for £38.94, made £25.33 after shipping and fees, and uh, received, posi received positive feedback from the buyer on that one as well. So I'll always look out for vintage equivalents of things that I know sell. So like I say, I know the dictaphone type recorders sell and the digital voice recorders sell um so the vintage equivalent of that would be something like this steno equip uh, this steno equipment and uh yeah sure enough I, I wasn't wrong on that one so that was that was kind of a little bit of a not a gamble but certainly an educated uh an educated not guess either educated chance educated try i don't know but yeah i i, I just gave it a shot and it worked out for me in the end 21st of July, Omega 13mm slimlined hairbrush styler, heated brush styler, uh, came out of the £65 bundle of stuff, this was a brand new factory sealed item, um, you know, no reason to believe otherwise, it was, it had the original, uh, like the, the round sealy stickers on it as opposed to any sort of tape or anything like that, didn't look like it had been opened before, so had no reason to think that this was, uh, you know, anything other than a brand new uh, item. Sold for £20.94, cost 85p because it was, came out of the £65 bundle. Uh, sold for £20.94 and made 12 72 after shipping and fees on that one. 21st of July again, Swiss Voice EPO uh, cordless phone. Uh, cordless phones I've done okay with in the past. Uh, certainly Philips ones they didn't tend to do okay. Panasonic, any any of the sort of good consumer brand names tend to, tend to do okay in cordless phones. Um these were, I picked up two for a fiver at a local car boot, I picked up this one and I picked up another one in a similar style which is made by uh, Idex I think rather than uh, rather than the Swiss Voice but these Swiss Voice ones were quite expensive when they were new, um, as I've said about sort of Swiss type equipment and German equipment before it tends to be very good quality, very well made and uh, with, with, with a lot of uh, 
good um, lifespan components and things like that. They, they tend to build stuff to last and they tend to, to make quality items. This you can probably see in the pictures. The only issue really with this phone was that it was supposed to be a lot whiter than it actually is and uh, there is some discoloration, some yellow into the plastics on there which you can even, it's even picking it up on the camera. Uh, but again, as always, if something's got a little bit of an issue with it but it's otherwise fine, I'll always sort of mention that in the listing and say look, and I did with this one, I said the, the, the exterior plastics have yellowed as you can see in the pictures and but otherwise it doesn't interfere with, interfere with uh, operation or anything like that and otherwise the phone is absolutely fine. It, is literally just this colored so this cost two pound fifty sold for 33.94 um, and after shipping and fees we made 23.69 on that one uh, 22nd of july now as uh, marvel eternals hardback graphic novel a bundle of comics was the very first thing I bought when I decided to start reselling. Um, even before I decided to go full time, even when I was sort of just dabbling in it, the the thing that tripped me off into actually the the moment I pulled the trigger and started buying stock to to resell um, was a bundle of comics that I bought from a charity shop up near my mother in law's, and uh, I paid way over the odds for them. I paid, you know, with hindsight now, I paid too much money for it, but I'm still it. I'm only saying that because I'm not really making any sort of serious profit on them. And for the amount of time that I've had them now, which is probably a year in all fairness, um, they've sat for a year and I'm making about, well, you can see there, 398 on something that, that's been sat for a year. So arguably it's probably not really making any money, but on paper it is. So cost 308 on this one again it was a bundle of comics so that the um the price got split the, the total price got split between the number of comics that were in the bundle um sold for 12.94 and made 3.98 after shipping and fees i've subsequently had positive feedback from the buyer on this one as well i just didn't put the little badge on the video because uh, it was only the other day that he gave us the feedback 22nd of July, Adventures of Wurzel Gummidge DVD set. Uh, right, how do I explain Wurzel Gummidge if you don't know who Wurzel Gummidge is? Or anything about Wurzel Gummidge? So it was a TV show in the sort of 70s and 80s. Uh, starred John Pertwee, uh, who was... Was John Pertwee also a doctor in Doctor Who? I think he may have been. Um, yeah, yeah, looking at his face on the cover of that now, I'm pretty sure he was a doctor in Doctor Who as well. Um, but he stars as a, he's a scarecrow, um, but he's alive, but he can change his heads for different heads, and he's in love with a character called Aunt Sally, who, for what I can tell, from what I can remember, I used to watch this as a kid, I definitely used to watch Wurzel Gummidge as a kid, Aunt Sally was either sort of a kind of posh female scarecrow or she was like a giant china doll that had kind of been brought to life it's weird to describe um but it's kind of one of those old school 70s 80s cult tv shows and it was a brand new and sealed dvd box set so yeah if, if you're intrigued by my description just go and look up wurzel gummidge on youtube Ba be baffled by it for a couple of minutes and then go and watch a cat video or something just to just kind of bring yourself back into reality um yeah cost 199 this one sold for 13.94 brand new and sealed dvd made 5.94 after shipping and fees on that one it did okay actually you know 39 sold that for 9.99 is not too bad um i didn't know what it was going to sell for when i picked it up it was just i thought oh yeah where's the i remember that and and often if you if you see something out and about and you and, and you your first instincts, your first reaction to it is, oh yeah, I remember that from when I was a kid or from when I was at college or from, from whatever time in your life. If you think you remember that, then chances are somebody else is going to remember that as well. And chances are also that somebody's going to be wanting that thing. So it's often worth looking up the things and picking up the things that you remember from your childhood or from, you know, from a, if you grew up, say, say you grew up in a, a you know, an iconic decade, like the seventies or the eighties or something like that, you know, where there was all of this different, all of these different developments and all of these new things coming into the world. Um, just yet yeah, look into the things that you remember from your childhood uh, because they can be worth a lot of money. Okay. Case in point, this isn't necessarily, but it still goes to that whole thing of I picked it up because I remembered it from my childhood and it made a bit of money. So there you go. Uh, 
you know, if you're just starting out as a reseller and, and stuff like that, or you haven't maybe got a lot of money to start reselling, you can spend two quid and make turn it into sort of six quid profit. So, you know, you, you're making three times your money, you know, three times your initial outlay, and, and it, it, it's just kind of turning money over and, and getting things back in um, and getting sales as well. So early on, you know, or if you don't have a huge budget to resell with, things like this can be worth looking at. 22nd of July, uh, Super Dry Athletics Colour Block Cagoule Jacket. This was actually, I've said about, um, I said in the previous video about Super Dry not being a brand that I would particularly wear myself. I kind of liked this. This is probably one of the items that sort of dips its toe in the territory of maybe I would wear that. Um, it was really sort of retro look to it, as you can probably see. It kind of, it made me think of so either sort of, 80s sort of Olympic athletics type uh, warm up jersey, or uh, on the other side, like um, maybe something Rocky would wear training or something like that. That kind of era, that sort of vibe. It's really nice, really nice quality. Didn't look like it had been worn very much at all. Um, this was in one of the sales that we did. We did a couple of sales in July just to help move some product. Uh, this one cost eight ninety five, sold for forty pounds forty nine. Uh, what was it up at previously? Uh, Forty two ninety nine. It was up at originally, which wasn't a bad price for it either, to be fair. But it sold for forty forty nine. Made twenty pound ninety one after shipping and fees. This went on global shipping program to Germany. Um, Danke schön, Germany. Uh, you buy lots of stuff from me, and uh, I love you for it. Um, and received positive feedback from the buyer on that one as well. So yeah, great stuff. Twenty third of July, Charles Turwitt. Uh, Threatney Bit Cufflinks. Now, Charles Turwitt is one of those kind of traditional British shirt makers and tailors. Uh, they had, I think they still probably have a really good reputation as well, in fairness. But I know what they did do a year or so ago um, in the face of a lot of competition uh, from similar sort of shirt makers. They started really slashing their prices on some of their shirts to the extent that I was picking up, when when I very first started reselling, I was picking up Charles Turwitt shirts and I was selling them and uh, making a little bit of money on them. But they've really dropped off. Uh, there are still some of the sort of really high-end bespoke stuff um, can do very well secondhand, but I've not seen sort of the type of Charles Turwitt shirts that I was selling, which are just kind of your general dress or business shirts. I've not really seen those selling for particularly good money uh, anymore since Charles Turwitt started slashing their own prices. So, but having said that, accessories, things like these cufflinks and stuff like that, I'm not so sure uh, because these did quite well. They did sit for a little while. I think I had these for maybe around about three or four months before they sold. Uh, but I picked them up for two ninety nine at a charity shop. They are genuine coins. Um, the threat me bit is an old British coin, uh, which is like a how many sizes has it got? Is it eight sided, nine sided? I can't remember. But it's a uh, you know not a round coin anyway. Um, and these have been attached to the cufflinks and gold plated. So. Um, yeah, a little bit of a kind of historical sort of value to them in that sense, I guess. But obviously they're not um, antique, per se. Um, so these, bought for 2 99 in a local charity shop, sold for 34 99 and made 21 57 after shipping and fees on those. Um, they had a big old basket, I remember actually getting these, they had a big old basket full of loads of cufflinks. And I just went, and, and he said, oh, we've just put these out. And so I just went through them and cherry-picked all the best ones at 2 99 a pair and... I think I've sold most of them now, actually, as well. Um, these are definitely the jewel in the crown in terms of the profit, um, but I've sold most of them, and I've not lost on any of them. I've made you know a good sort of few quid here and there on each pair I've sold so far. Uh, still on the 23rd of July. This was a little bit of a punt. Um, I think it was a slow day when I was out buying stuff one day, and I'd been going around the charity shops, and I wasn't really picking up a great deal of stuff, and I just picked up this book at four quid, and I thought, yeah, do you know what, it's got some nice pictures in it, so let's let's have a go. Uh, it was missing its dust cover. It's called The Orchid Paintings of John Day, A Very Victorian Passion, and uh, it it's a collection of uh, botanical paintings done by the artist John Day uh, between 1863 and 1888. Um, and it was a reasonably good, you know, it was a reasonably well-priced book when I looked it up. 
Um, but I think I bought it on such a sort of downtime and, and such a kind of, oh God, I need to just buy something now, um, that I didn't even pay attention to the fact that it was missing its dust cover. I just picked it up and thought, yeah, yeah, that's that's quite cool. And I looked it up on eBay and, oh yeah, it's had some good prices. I didn't even twig that the, you know, the 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 price of the ones on eBay was because they had dust covers and clearly the one that is in front of me looked different. It just didn't even twig to me at all. I think I just got so complacent by that point that I was prepared to almost buy anything. And that is a very dangerous frame of mind to get into. Um, I'm glad, I, again, it's one of those things that I've identified and I can sort of avoid doing in future. So I paid £4 for this. Did Were it to have its dust cover, I'd have probably sold it for about 40 quid because that's, from memory, I think that was about the going rate for them, 30 to 40 quid with the dust cover. But as it happens, I sold it for 11 um with postage. So it sold for 15 94 altogether. After shipping and fees, I made £2.08. So I didn't lose any money on it, um, but it could have potentially, had I done that with a you know a dearer item in that same frame of mind, I could have cost myself a lot of money there. Um, but gl thankfully I didn't. Uh, 23rd of July. Oh, I've not changed the title on that. <laughs> it still says the Orchid Paintings of John Day. Professional YouTuber. Um, yeah, this was a Hive smart plug. Um, works, connects to your Wi-Fi network. You can command Alexa and all of these things to turn on your, your appliances if they're plugged into this plug. I don't subscribe to all of this kind of having a smart assistant or Alexa or Google Home or any of these things. It no, doesn't, doesn't do it for me. Uh, but, you know, it's very popular. Uh, this actually turned out to be a free item as well in the end because in a bundle of stuff I picked up, there was a, an extension lead in there like a four-way like a four-way extension lead and this was just kind of plugged into one of the sockets on the four-way extension lead so the extension lead got binned because it wasn't worth you know i've got more of them than i could sink a ship with um and this was just taken out as a kind of all oh, right i'll see if that'll sell for anything sure enough it did had it up at 19.99 um but we, we did a sale on sort of the plugs and um different sort of you know those kind of things plugs cables adapters we did a sale on those um so this one sold for 17.99 with zero cost against it uh made 20 uh, total selling price was 21.94 and uh made 14.14 after shipping and fees I was all over the place with that one, wasn't I? Uh, 25th of July. SciTech Pro Bridge 310 Complete Pocket Bridge Edition. Uh, so I've spoken... I think this might have been in a haul video, maybe? Yeah, I think it was at the same sort of time I bought the Boreal Climbing Shoes. So this probably will have been in a video uh, when I actually picked it up. Picked it up from a charity shop out of town. And... Um, I know SciTech as a brand. SciTech make a lot of uh, computer peripherals. They're very well known for their joysticks and their kind of uh, sort of quasi-realistic flight simulator controls and stuff like that. So SciTech's a popular brand, but they're also very well known for partnerships with people like Gary Kasparov um, in chess games, electronic chess games. And some of the electronic chess games do incredible money. Um, you know, some of them out there sell for a hundred quid and, and and upwards. Particular ones that. There's a lot of you know very specific ones that do well, um, but generally speaking, they do okay as well. So you know, as long as you're not paying a huge amount for them, these SciTech electronic games can be a good you know a, a, a good earner. This one I picked up on a bit of a, like I say, I I didn't really know Bridge. I don't, I'm, I'm not a you know I, I'm not sort of into some of these less common card games. I know sort of you know basic poker games like your Texas Hold'em. I know like your um, pontoon and 21 etc those types of games but bridge is not a game that i've ever really had any experience with uh, or any contact with i just purely bought it based on the fact it was an electronic SciTech pocket game and i thought okay it should do all right this I, sh I should be able to scrape this um so it cost 5.99 as i say from a charity shop out of town sold for 43.94 and made 27.51 after shipping and fees on that one so it did pretty well um, I was happy with that, definitely, and uh, had positive feedback from the buyer as well, so he was happy with it. 25th of July, uh, Apple A135 US spec power adapters times two. So, uh, picked up a bundle of plugs and things last year uh, when I was just getting into going full time as a reseller, and uh, part of the bundle was a load of foreign, um, well, not foreign, yeah, foreign. There's no other word for it, is there? I, I, it's bad that this day and age you kind of feel bad for saying the word foreign, like you're doing something wrong. 
But yeah, they're foreign adapters. So we've got US spec ones. I've got some European ones as well. They are foreign to me because I'm from the UK and there is nothing offensive about saying the word foreign, right? Anyway, see, I'm still second guessing myself for saying foreign. I'm still I'm sticking with it. They're foreign power adapters. And um, the big bundle of them, again, so split the cost between all the number of items in the bundle. So these cost 50p. I will always list stuff like this. Um, don't expect it to sell overly quickly because, again, it's not going to be something that's necessarily used in this country. But <clears throat> always put travel adapter in your description because people going abroad quite often, certainly if they've got high-end electronics, they don't necessarily want to trust their high-end electronics to a converter plug. They'd rather have the original equipment that they can plug their, you know, their iPhone, in the case of this, obviously their iPhone into when they go abroad, when they go on holiday. So always put travel adapter in your description for stuff like that is my little tip on these things. Don't expect them to sell very quickly, but they will sell eventually. I've sold a couple of Euro ones for Samsung and things like that, as well as Apple. Um, these are, I think, is this is probably the first US ones that I've sold, but they were sold to a buyer in the UK. So whether, you know, it's somebody that needs it for business or what, it's none of my business, but obviously, you know, they, they've clearly bought them because they're going to the States for some reason. So these cost, um, actually, though, these cost 25p each because the total cost for the unit is 50p. So, um, the, sorry, the total cost for the two items that he bought was 50p not the unit the unit cost is 25p um they were in the plugs and cables sale uh, so the total selling price here was 18.33 and made 11.25 after shipping and fees on that one those two should i say 25th of july uh this is another one of joe's items that she's selling to kind of finance her art and crafts projects and um maybe looking into getting selling some of the resin pieces that she's making so uh, we didn't have any cost price against this one. This was a ceramic Hello Kitty breakfast set. Um, Joe really is up on sort of Hello Kitty and the Sanrio brand and some of the other sort of collectible brands and things like that as well. So I I actually recently have picked up a um, a plate with the Miffy character on it. Miffy's um, by Dick Bruner, Dutch artist, and it's a she's, she I think she yeah Miffy she is a rabbit. Um, you, pr you you might know it if you see the actual you know the image of Miffy. If you just Google Miffy, you might think, oh yeah, I've seen that one before. I don't know the wouldn't have known the first thing about it had I not known that Joe had mentioned the name before. So when I was out and about a couple of days ago shopping, I picked up this Miffy plate and thought, oh yeah, Miffy, I've I've heard of that. Oh, it's only a couple of quid. Let's go for it. And as it turns out, it's it should do you know about twenty five quid this plate. I think from memory, maybe twenty quid. But yeah. Either way, it's going to make a bit of money. It's not going to be a massive earner, but it was something that I'd picked up simply off the basis of a little bit of fringe knowledge from somebody else. So you don't always have to rely on kind of knowing everything inside out yourself if you've got people at hand that can kind of plant a little seed for you and say, you know, if you've got, like, like for instance, you might know somebody who's really into a particular brand of clothing and knows every single piece that that designer or that that brand has brought out in the last 10 years. And they might say to you, oh, it's such and such a brand. And it, you know, it might not even necessarily be a big name brand, like say, you know, Hugo Boss or somebody like that, that everybody knows. It might be a, a more obscure brand that's maybe only available in a few different countries, but you'll then see that, I, you know, you, you might then see an item made by that brand out and about, and it'll just, two and two will go together. So always keep that open mind when you're talking to people about things that they're interested in or that they're passionate about as well, because the little tidbits of information you can pick up there can often lead you to pick up things that you can make money off down the line as well. You don't always have to be an expert if you know one. That's That's kind of the tip there in that sense. Um, so yeah, no cost against this one. Cut sold for twenty six forty nine. Made eighteen sixteen after shipping and fees. Had positive feedback from the buyer, and that went on a global shipping program to France. Twenty sixth of July, uh, Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Battle twenty two PS one game. This was a bit of a kind of fail purchase, really. Um, it would have made money had I not put it in a sale. Uh, I should have really kind of paid a bit more attention to that because it's lost £1.20, as you can see there. Um, but I picked it up as a, a part of a small bundle of stuff that I was trying to... It was actually at a toy fair, and I was trying to get the stall holder to come down on the price of a few bits and pieces that I really wanted. Um, so to sort of 
try and try and sweeten the deal. I picked up a couple of PS1 games and stuff like that. So it has had the desired effect on bringing the price down on the other items that I wanted, but the price that I've ended up then paying for these PlayStation 1 games is ridiculous and is not in the realms of anything that I would ever want to pay for such things uh, by and large especially not without really knowing about them again Dragon Ball Z is a name that I've heard of you know I, I know it was kind of popular around the time of Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and, and all of those types of things um, so I know that it was popular then it still has a certain following these days I think I've seen you know Dragon Ball memes possibly things like that as well so i know there's definitely awareness of it out there so it, i didn't really have any doubt that it was gonna sell um i didn't know how much money it was gonna make but i certainly didn't expect to lose money on it however i've only lost one pound 20 on it and let's face it you can lose that running for the bus so it's not the end of the world i guess so it cost seven pound 50 sold for 12.84 would have done better had it not been in the sale um and i lost one pound 20 on that one so <laughs> Uh, 27th of July 2019, G-Unit Caribbean Millionaire Buccaneer Hoodie. Picked this up in a local charity shop. Um, didn't really see the brand in it at first, and just looked at it and thought, that's kind of interesting. It's it's not, again, it's not my personal cup of tea, but I kind of got a feel for it, and I just thought, this feels like something reasonably good quality, and it feels like something that people would want. Um, and there was all sorts of different elements flying around in my head so for one it's kind of that um almost that varsity jacket that university jacket type feel to it so you've got the the elasticated hem and the elasticated cuffs with the stripe uh the stripe pattern to them and that's very to, to me that's what it kind of made me think of in the back of my mind was the sort of u.s um university jackets and things and and i know that they have a a, a bit of a you know that they're quite sort of fashionable as well and they, they do have a bit of demand for those. And then the other aspects to it were that the embroidery um, and all of these individual little uh, details on it are all embroidered. Um, the embroidery was really tight, so I knew it was nice, nicely done embroidery. Um, and they were all sort of nautical themed uh, little pictures, little areas of embroidery. There's probably embellishments. Little nautical themed embellishments, that's the word. And uh, so it's like one was a ship's wheel and a skull and crossbones and a compass and stuff like that and a, a cross uh, cutlasses and stuff. Um, so I thought, yeah, okay, it's got that kind of pirate vibe even though it's kind of an urban thing. And then when I got sort of poking around in it, I saw the G-Unit G label. Now G-Unit, um, for those that aren't familiar, uh, the rapper 50 Cent, famous for songs like... Um, PIMP and Candy Shop and all of those kind of lovely um, themed songs. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, 50 Cent G Unit was his label, uh, his music production label, his clothing brand label, etc. And all of the other artists that were under that label uh, also collaborated with the G Unit brand in terms of different, you know, shoes and stuff like that. G Unit, I think, have also done collaboration shoes with. Um, possibly nike maybe adidas or somebody along those sort of lines as well so there's there's you'll see the g unit name attached to different items of clothing and, and kind of um music memorabilia and stuff like that and that's who it relates to it basically relates to 50 cent and his label mates so with that in mind i thought okay g unit stuff i've never sold before but i'm certainly familiar with the brand uh i'm certainly familiar with the name um, and I'm kind of into hip-hop music myself, although 50 Cent's not necessarily my personal cup of tea, but I'm certainly into my hip-hop, so I know once I, once I knew it was G-Unit, I could see the kind of hip-hop in it and thought, yeah, all right, I, I get this garment now, I, I understand this item now. Um, and it had big metal zip pulls as well that were in the shape of really ornate anchors. Uh, so I knew it would be a reasonably valuable piece, and I went and looked it up everywhere I conceivably could. I looked it up on Google, I looked it up on different uh, selling sites like, um, what are they called, Poshmark and Vinted and all of these kind of other selling sites that are kind of very specialised, Depop, all very specialised in clothes. Um, I looked it up on eBay, I, looked, I even tried looking around on Amazon for it, I looked on Google uh, Images, I looked on Google Shopping Tab. I could not find this anywhere at all um and i couldn't find similar looking 
hoodies either. So uh, I kind of just picked a price out of thin air, I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, and I put sixty four ninety nine on it. I think I might have actually put sixty nine ninety nine on it, and it sold for sixty four ninety nine in the sale. To be honest with you, um, but yeah, it sold for sixty four ninety nine. Cost five ninety nine, made forty four seventy nine after shipping and fees, and had positive feedback from the buyer on that one. So yeah, um, like I say, once all the pieces fell into place, I didn't really hesitate to pick this up and thought, yeah, that I should be able to do something with that. I was expecting to probably have to reduce it from that sort of price, but it surprised me, and it did it. So there we go. Sometimes obscure, and sometimes things that aren't necessarily what you would what would be on your own personal radar are definitely worth looking into. 28th of July, uh, this is a Sony DEJ785 Discman personal CD player. Uh, you know me and Sony, I will buy Sony anything uh, if I can make a bit of money on it, because it's generally very reliable. You don't have too many worries about having to do anything to it prior to sale in terms of repairs or servicings or anything like that most sony stuff is built to last it's built for, to the highest quality um and they have some really iconic designs as well so with the discman uh products for instance you tend to find that the 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 last generation the very later stuff tends to do good money um and the earlier generation stuff tends to do good money everything in between will generally make a profit if you're picking it up for the right price but it's the two parts at the extreme the last generation and the first generation and actually i think that says a lot for for most sort of um small electronics like that because i know it's the case with the uh, tape walkman as well the earlier ones and the final generation ones tend to be the ones that are, are, are the higher priced items and um, so this is a very late generation uh Discman personal CD player before we all started migrating over to, to different formats like these sort of short-lived mini disc and, and then into mp3s and digital stuff so this was a very very late Discman in that respect uh, it came in the 65 pound bundle as well uh, so this this single item um, is almost on its own responsible for paying for that entire bundle um, well not quite I guess because by the time you've taken off the shipping and fees but yeah you know it's still made at least half of the price of the bundle just in this one item so I'm going to be looking into buying a lot more bundles of things down the line just because they seem to be doing alright um, yeah so this cost 85p as I say it was in the £65 bundle sold for 49 54 and made 37 50 after shipping and fees on that one um, so that one is a bit of a home run uh, I think personally 85p into 37 50 happy days 28th of July the Boreal uh, rock wall bouldering climbing shoes um, massive thanks to my viewer whose name escapes me at the moment but I will put your name on screen you know um, who told me to put bouldering uh, and stuff in the title for these shoes uh, because I uh, no told me to put wall climbing I think in uh, the title for these shoes I was going to put bouldering in them anyway and uh, she said oh no wall climbing is really popular at the moment so make sure you put that in there so I did um, these were in a haul video which is why a viewer has given me this information so um, you'll have seen me pick these up from a charity shop out of town uh, they cost me 9.99 uh, sold for forty nine ninety four, and after shipping and fees, made twenty eight sixty six on those. Thank you very much. Twenty ninth of July, we got a Disney Store Lion King mug and plush. This was brand new, unused. The little Simba plush there was actually tagged to the handle of the mug uh, with one of those kind of locky tag doodars, um, technical terms. Um, so it was brand new. It was in a Disney Store box and everything as well. Um, Never, I would never hesitate really to pick up Disney mugs at the right price, but this was a little bit different because it was already bundled up with the plush and the mug. So, from memory, I think this is actually what Chris and Bell sort of started out doing a little bit. They kind of started bundling the plushes and the DVDs together and the plushes and the mugs. Yeah, check it out, guys. The Disney Store are doing it now. Look, they've nicked your idea. Get onto them. Um, this cost me £6, which is a bit more than I would normally want to pay for a mug, but it had the plush with it as well, and it was all brand new, so I thought, yeah, let's go for it. Uh, cost £6, sold for £28.94, made £14.36 after shipping and fees, and received positive feedback from the buyer on that one too. 30th of July, this is a good PlayStation game. Um, this was the Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater, Metal Gear Solid 3, Black Band Edition. Um, cost a pound as PlayStation 2 games generally seem to in a vast number of places that you pick them up secondhand, car boots, charity shops, things like that, they tend to be a pound, seems to be the average. Um, this one, again, goes into that sort of thing of, it was a game that I remember playing when I was growing up. Um, 
the Metal Gear Solid series was really, really popular. Um, it was one of the, you know, when I was growing up, it was kind of Metal Gear, um, Siphon, no, not Siphon Filter. Siphon Filter was good, um, but Splinter Cell, that was the one I was thinking of, and Halo was were the kind of console games. Uh, I, I grew up really, really speaking, playing PC games, to be quite honest with you, sort of Quake and stuff like that. Uh, but when I got into consoles, this was kind of the sort of era. So it was the Metal Gear, the Splinter Cells, the, 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 the that other one that I said a minute ago. What did I say a minute ago? It's gone. Anyway. <laughs> so this cost a pound, sold for 25 49 made 18 19 after shipping and fees on that one and had positive feedback from the buyer. Again, it was a complete one. So it had the manual. It had, um, like I think there was a map or some sort of other little insert in there as well. And it was all just really, really tidy. Uh, I didn't expect it to be worth that much. Again, I, d I never expect these games to be worth, you know, north of a tenner, really speaking. When I pick these PlayStation 2 games up, I'm always very surprised when anything comes through that's north of a tenner in terms of price. Well, this movie in a 21 99 was just like, well, hey, I've actually bought a decent, you know, a decent profit margin game for a change, and it's actually made reasonable cash. So, uh, cost a pound. Sold for 25 49 and made 18 19 after shipping and fees. Had positive feedback from the buyer. I can't remember if I said that bit already. 31st of July, another one of Joe's items that she's just clearing out to make way for a project. Uh, so this was own. These were cake slice metal storage tins. Uh, each tin, obviously, as you can see, looks like a different slice of cake. Uh, sold for 18 94 made 11 83 after shipping and fees on those and had positive feedback from the buyer. So Joe will get the 11 83 and I'll keep the positive feedback. 31st of July, I think this is actually the last item. This, again, is out of a bundle, uh, so it ended up being free uh, when there's too many items in a bundle to sort of apportion an individual cost price to. I'll split the cost price up between, you know, some of the, the ones that have got a bit of a... Uh, that are going to have a better selling price. And then other stuff just had to end up being free, really, because there was so much that I paid so little for. Uh, so this was free, uh, sold for ten ninety four, and with seven twenty nine after shipping and fees. Also had positive feedback from the buyer on that one. This is the Sade uh, or Side. Bring me <laughs> no, it's, it's Sade. I just like saying Side in that kind of um, sort of. All right, darling. Accent. Cockney. That's the word I was looking for. All right, Side. Um, bring me home live. Twenty eleven Blu Ray. It's a live concert performance from Saturday. So yeah, that's that one. And I think that was the last item for July. Yes, it was. So as you can see, July was not a shining month in terms of profit. Um, still paid my bills, still got a roof over my head and nobody's chasing me for money. Uh, but at the same time, you know, the gold Aston Martin's going to have to go on hold. So uh, yeah, total cost of stock across the two parts of this video so between part one and part two if you haven't seen part one yet go and check it out you can see the other items that i've sold this month the total cost of all the items across the two parts of this video is 161.57 the total value of the sales for june 29th spot the deliberate mistake come on professional youtuber um total value of sales for july 2019 was 1504.89 and the total profit after shippings fees and deductions was 879.59 so still made you know a profit that i could live on um but it's not been a very lavish lifestyle not that my lifestyle is ever very lavish i'm not gonna lie but it's definitely not been a lavish lifestyle this month i don't think i've even been to dominoes this month so you know You've got to kind of be prepared when you're doing this full time. You've got to be prepared for the, the, the peaks and the troughs and to sort of kind of tweak your lifestyle and tweak your expectations accordingly. You know, when the money's not coming in as much, you've got to then look at maybe sort of saving money as opposed to, to you know, if you can't make the money for whatever reason, then you need to look at saving money. So, for instance, um, an example of this. And this is actually a lesson that I got from Resale Rabbit as well, so shout out to John. Uh, he Early on in some of his videos, he always talked about having the mentality of, of if you can't be making money, be saving money, and that's kind of stuck with me a little bit as well. Um, so, yeah, a prime example of this. Um, Joe and I keep guinea pigs. We've got five guinea pigs, and um, their food, obviously, with a, a number of guinea pigs, you go through quite a lot of food. One of the charity shops near me... Um, is actually a, an animal charity charity shop and they get a lot of bags of food and things like that from pet stores uh, who 
you know, if the pet store, say, say something gets torn on the shelf, a bag of dry food will get torn on the shelf in a pet shop um, and the pet shop will just put a bit of tape over the tear and because they don't want to then sell it because some of the quantity is missing, they'll just send it off to these charities. And these charities, sometimes they'll use them uh, to feed animals that they've got in their shelters, but sometimes they'll sell it in the shops as well. And I actually managed to pick up a 10 kilo sack of um, Burgess, which is a reasonably good quality guinea pig food. Um, the 10 kilo sack that I picked up, normally I think it retails at around about 30 quid and I managed to pick one up in this charity shop for a tenner the other day. So although I've not you know, necessarily made a lot of money in July, I've been able to save a bit of money on feeding the guinea pigs by buying this big sack of food that'll last a while and was cheap. So yeah, you've got to be prepared to sort of tweak your lifestyle, tweak your expectations as you know the ebb and flow of money and profit comes in and out. So let's just move on to the other little bits and pieces. This is the promoted listings totals for uh, July. Yeah, I, keep, I wanted to say June then because of my typo, but July. Uh, had two campaigns running, so I've been playing around a little bit with advertising and actually turned it off for a little bit as well, um, just to see if it had any impact. Uh, it did seem like it was doing, so I turned it back on. Um, so for a total of... Uh, sold 25 items on advertising, with uh, advertising fees on them. Total ad fees for July was 20... Uh, 20, God, I can't even read... Um, £5.61 and the total value of sales that £5.61 in advertising spend generated was £560.65 so I've even written it at the bottom I've even written it at the bottom of the screen and I couldn't get across the point that I was trying to make yeah, spent £5.61 on promoted listings generated 25 sales totaling £560.65 there we go, happy days so yeah, if you're not promoting your listings guys I strongly suggest you have a play around with it particularly uh, if you have a business or shop account, because with a business and shop account, you can um, play around with the percentages a lot more than you can if you're just doing it from a private account or a non-shop uh, non account, um, because you have to go with eBay's trending rate on some of those, and some of their trending rates are quite high, and they don't need to be. So yeah, have a play around with promoted listings. It's definitely, definitely worth doing. And that, guys, is everything for uh, July 2019 Sales Roundup Part 1 and Part 2, all done. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for listening. I'm sorry I've been out of the loop for so long, but I'm back on track now with things, and I'm hoping I'll be getting more and more videos out for you soon. Uh, August's sales roundup should be up in the next couple of days, the first part of that, and then we'll get cracking uh, doing some of the reselling from scratch stuff, which I'm really excited to do for you. So thank you very much once again, guys. Have a great day. Oh, I nearly forgot. If you did enjoy the video and you'd like to subscribe, do feel free to do so. Uh, also, feel free to give the bell a little tickle there, uh, and that'll notify you whenever I upload a video. If you did like the video, please leave me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, please feel free to leave a thumbs down, but don't just thumb and run. Please let me know in the comments below what you did and didn't like, and I'll try and adjust things accordingly. I can't believe I almost forgot to say that, but thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.